Hi, my name's Martin. I'm going to have a tour around your uh, vehicle that you've just bought. I'm going to start on the outside and work our way in. Have yourself explanatory. Plug your uh, electrics into there. Moving on to here, you have a, what we call a wet locker. So lift that up. You can put all wet stuff in there, like boots and mucky things like that. Into here's the toilet cassette. Pull this out. You have a handle there, so you can wheel it to there. If you're not using the handle, push that there. Click it into there. If you're going to empty this, you turn that around, unscrew that, press this button, and hold it. This just lets the air in, so everything else can flow out. Once it's empty and you've washed it out, if you look on here, there's a measure. And it'll show you when you put your blue in how much to put in. Normally use that and put two to three litres of water in. Give it a good shake. And then put it back in. Onto here. You have an external shower point. Which you put in there. Push that into there. Ooh, push that into there. Water comes out. Your showers, shower heads there. As we go along, sorry, I forgot to say the. Uh, no, I am not. Sorry. There's a waste wastewater tank here. That you can see the levers inside for levers for that is just inside up here, I believe. <sighs> which I'll show you when we're inside. There's a rod inside there. Moving on to here, you have um, the ability to have two tanks. We put one on for demonstration purposes. You have a auto changeover valve on here, which you can see is pointing to green on there. It's pointing to this one. Um, if you run it in as a tandem system, this would run all the way down till it's empty. It would automatically cross over to this bottle that was here but that would turn to red, signifying this bottle is empty. And then you can turn it round. As you can see, it's gone to red because there's no bottle on there. Turn it back to there, it's gone to green. You have a um, bike system here. You put, put them through. Your wheels, lock each one's off, and then you have your arms for each one to use. To undo this, you turn that, because it's locked down at the moment. To undo this, you turn that, push that up, like that. You also have a camera, which obviously we'll deal with when we're in the, uh, we're in the vehicle. Nice storage area. Um, this shelf's been made, you can lift it up or down if, if you want and use it. Some more space under here. There is your awning handle, it's here. So this is telescopic. You can move it up and down where you want to go. Put that in there. I always say get to where you can get your legs down because um, they can catch the wind and they do move quite a lot. So on this particular one, you're going to flick your leg out there and it just comes out on a, can you see that, just comes out on and on there. Put it to where you want, under the screw, put it up. Obviously do the same this side, pull it out on there, and down on that one, and that's it, to put it away, undo these, make sure your leg goes all the way in, knock that off, put your foot to the back or the front, and then just push that in. 
Moving on to here, this is your Audi boiler vent from your combi boiler. Um, very similar to being at home, obviously when the gas is running, if it was a cold morning, this would be blowing out hot air and steam. You get some water condensation down here, nothing to be alarmed about. This is your uh, gas outlet, so if you're having a, a gas barbecue, you plug the, plug the fitting in there, then you'll be able to turn this around and the gas would flow to your barbecue. This is a 240 socket, so if you're out again under your awning, you can sit in there and go into there. This is a max view TV point. If you was to, just under here, when you take it off, there is, I can't get it off at the minute, but just under there is a plug point for your aerial. Here's your fridge vents. This one will have a little bit of heat on it while it's running because it's residual heat from the heat exchanger, don't worry about that. Under the bottom here, if you have a look, you'll be looking for a flame just there if it was on gas, and I've got it running on gas to show you this. Okay, self-explanatory. This is your, uh, obviously, water intake. This has got a super flow on. You can buy an additional pump um, if you were parked up and didn't want to move. Just take this cap off. It has a 12 volt pump that you put into a barrel. The water would suck up and you could put it straight in there. Again, so you, meaning if you was all set up, you wouldn't have to move. Onto this. There's an extra bit of um, pipe there. If you was gonna, you put that in your waist and move it, move it obviously away from your vehicle if you weren't over a pit. If you was emptying your fresh water tank, if you just look in here, this is where the water comes out. This comes here, old Bob. And this is your waste tank lever. Just, just turn it the other way, and that will let all your water come out. All of your carpets have been checked to make sure they're right and they fit. Just under here are your two leisure batteries and they're there for you to use. Once there is your diesel, just normal diesel. There. And then switch get the keys. So to get in here, you obviously have your window blinds. And this is your um, lever to undo you into your bonnet. That undoes the bonnet. You have your tool kit just under there. And your habitation, uh, your vehicle battery is under this area here. Moving on to here, not a massive amount you'll do under here, but you have your dipstick, which is just there. You fill your oil up just there. This is uh, brake fluid. This is a header tank for your radiator. This is power steering fluid to get to the tops of them. Just undo these two, three little clips, pull it off, 
and you'll be able to get to the top of your reservoirs. Into the corner here is where you put your um, windscreen wash. Once you're done, push that back down, put the lid over. Moving on to here is your panel. Uh, as you can see, you can turn your lights on and off with all these. Obviously, you need your pump on these, your lights, your awning light. You can dim your lights on that one. These are all in the book for you to have a look at as well. Obviously, you turn the power on here. You've got a menu that you can go through on here. It tells you the internal temperature, all sorts of levels. There's tank heater on it and select a battery so you can have leisure battery, which it's on at the moment, or you can turn it into um, a habitation battery. Uh, vehicle battery this is your solar panel where we're at, at the moment it's putting in about 13 at the moment or 12.5 and obviously it goes through all the way back to the sergeant unit and system settings and all that all that's on there um moving on to here this is how obviously you turn your aldi heating on here once it's on you can go into your settings you can obviously set your temperature by Using that, you can have your water temperature on from nothing to middle or to high. Um, most people run it on where it is there in the middle because if you run it on high, the water heater will supersede any heating it will give you and it won't give you heating until you've, um, until you've warmed your water up. But if you run it on the middle where it is now, it gives you both. Onto the electric, electric you can have um, off, you can have one kilowatt of heating, two kilowatt of heating or three. Most people run it on two because if you was on site and you try and draw much more than two kilowatts, it would blow you, it would trip the trip on the site. Obviously, if you was really cold and it was top end of Scotland and it's minus 10 degrees and you want a bit more warmth, you can also run your heating on gas and electric. If you were just while camping, you would obviously turn that off and you would just be running on gas. Um, into your settings here, there's loads of different ones. Read your book there. You can um, set it for the difference at night time. You can have the brightness. You can program it so it comes in at a particular time of the day. You can set your temperature readings. You can set your clock. There's so many There's so many different things in there. You can set your screen brightness, how long it stays on for. It's a bit of information overload for me to tell you now. But if you look in your book and you can see that, but this is the main one that gives you all the stuff that you need to, to do to have water heat, uh, temperature water heating and how you're going to heat it. This obviously you've got a carbon monoxide fire alarm there. So going back to this little box here, this is for your fan for your for your fridge on the back. So the bottom setting, which I've now put on, should be hopefully if that way around, we'll be running the fans. And now running on that it's all that is is drawing the hot air out so it's in a hot climate it will be making your fridge more efficient if you come back to here and i put that switch in the upwards position which has now gone yellow that's on a thermostatically controlled one so it will come in just below here there is a thermostat that once this gets too hot it will set your fans off that's what the little box is for Obviously, I don't know if you're able to see or not, but we've had the water on to you. It's all nice and warm. Just let a bit come through. There you go. That's all now. Coming up warm. I don't think you can see that on there, can you? No. It's all nice and hot. Moving on to the front of your fridge. See, again, you probably won't be able to see this is cold. I just want to show you it's all working. Um, you can pick your sources on here for where you're going to go. So at the moment, we're on gas. If I want to put it onto electric, I can put it onto electric there. If I want to put it on battery, you'll hear it make a noise now saying it's there's a fault on it. That is because this fridge works off the battery when the engine is running. So it won't do won't work as we're stood here at the moment. You can go into auto and you'll see that's picked up electric. That basically picks the best source present is the best way of putting that. So at the moment it seems we've got 240 electric on. 
that is why it's picked the 240. If the electric was to fail or you had a power cut it would, and your gas was on, it would come to this one here and it will go drop straight to your gas. And as soon as you start your engine, it will drop straight to your battery so everything's kept nice and cold. So onto here, obviously this one, you can see when you put that on the red lights on, that's for your hot plate at the back. This one is for your gas here. I'll show you them all working. That's all them on. And obviously you've got your grill, your little grill pan here. So we'll turn your grill on. Can you see that working on? Yeah. Make sure I get it on. You can see it working. So that's that one working. Onto your oven. You have a light there so you can see what you're doing. Um, and then this one automatically lights. And you can see it just under there in the bottom under keeping it nice and warm. It's just a little cupboard under here and the switch for your, for your um, igniter under there. And so you've got a fan here with some lights on. You can turn your lights on and off from there. Turn your fan on. And obviously you can turn them lights off as well. Moving on to your bed area. Oh, sorry, bed area lounge area that also makes a bed. For the seating area here, all the windows, they've got a little push button on the on some of them. Open your windows and it'll click where you want to be. On there, wind them up. You can put them where you want, once you want to move them, just undo them there. Obviously on it, every window and every um, roof light, you have a fly blind and you have a blackout blind. If we just, we're going to just stop, make the bed and then we can show you the bed made. The bed made up, all it is is these, these, push, these push back in when you're done, you remove that there, push that back in, lift up and your leg bends out and slides back in here and do you remember I said outside to get rid of your wastewater tank that is just there undo that and your wastewater will flow out yeah under this side is your boiler yeah it does all your water and your heating this little toggle here, if you was to empty it for winter or you wanted to empty it, um, your water, your boiler, you would lift this toggle up so it was vertical instead of horizontal and all the water will run out your boiler. Obviously, you can have a freestanding table in here, which is here, and lives in your wardrobe. Lives in there, and just locks off. Into your wardrobe here, you have your Wi-Fi system there. Obviously, you put your own SIM in, register it, and you'll be able to use it straight away. You have your TV aerial here. TV aerial there. Obviously when you're in when you're on site, you would turn push that up, turn it to where you need it to be, pull that down once you're obviously finished and going home and lock it off so it's nice and tight. You have your Audi fluid there. Um, 
doesn't want to be much above minimum on here which is where it is now um, don't be tempted to fill it up to maximum unless it will be flowing out all over the place obviously we're into the toilet area moving back down the vehicle you've got a radiator there you've got your shower which is uh, fairly self-explanatory on there hot and cold onto the tap and obviously you've got your shower rows that you'd have like you, are, you do at home onto the toilet it's a swivel top put it where you want obviously open the slider do what you're doing press the button run the water through once the water's run through and done put the slider back Right, this is your um, another living area and stroke dining area. I'm going to stop the video again now, and then we're going to look at making the bed in this area for you. So obviously that's your bed set up for this area. Um, so now we'll build it back together. these live under a seat or at the moment they're in the wardrobe Seating area all back together. Into the top here, you have your solar charger there, you your solar panel on the top. Nothing you'll see when it's in daylight and we're not inside, you'll see this will flash if it needs charging up at the moment, obviously it's plugged in. These are your 12 volt fuses, again, which are all in the bag. Deal bag, there'll be a book with all, all I mean. While this is on green, that means they're all good fuses. Normally when one of these, or if one of these blows, it will be red wherever the fuse is that's blown. These are your trips. Um, normally, again, if it was going to trip, it would um, trip the stand that you're at rather than in here. But if you did have to, these will flick up again like that. Obviously, this signifies your charging. This signifies that your water heater's on. And if you was leaving it for any length of time, they do recommend then 14, 16 days if you're leaving it any longer. And then just turn it off at the button there. Obviously you've got your drop down bed here. You have your ladder here that clips onto, onto it. Like that. So you can get into your bedroom area. So you've had a phantom put on here, which is into this here, which we'll talk about. Um, and obviously you've got your MOT certificates, which will be in your bag. This is your code for it in there, as I say. Um, onto your Phantom, you get um, a Fiat key, one electronic one and one manual one. Oh, sorry, it's actually somebody's given you two here on that. Sorry, my, my mistake. And you have a Phantom key ring. So on this one, you can lock, unlock and knock off the sonics which are these here so if you've locked it and you're inside or you have a pet or an animal that's walking around it won't set your alarm off so you can lock unlock and take the sonics off if you need onto your fake key you would so you can unlock the front doors you can unlock the back doors you can lock it all together and once you've locked it all together and you want the sonics off if you're using this key press it again after about five seconds and that will take these sonics off as well So on, onto here, you have a 12 volt socket there. You obviously have a USB socket there, heated mirrors, 
central lock-in and hazard warning light. Um, onto here you have the fan, that's what speed you want to be on. That is your air conditioning. This is a heat or cold. This is fresh air in. This is recirculation air. This is where you're actually sending your air to your, to your face, to your feet, to the windscreen. Uh, fairly self-explanatory on the radio. You've got your radio, your media, you can link it all up once you've got your phone. Um, obviously you can go into different settings. You Onto this, this particular vehicle you have your camera so if you put it into reverse you get the back of your um, bike right there if you put it back into into drive if you're or neutral it gives you the camera that you can use as a rear view mirror onto here you can have it as a clipboard if you undo this you can have it and put an ipad on it or some or a sat nav or anything and put it all into there once you're done you can lock it all back up just put it down Obviously, um, six-speed gearbox, self-explanatory. You've got, um, I'll have to put this back on. Onto here, you've got, um, you've got um, your um, speed limiter on here. It shows you it's on. Speed limiter disconnected, speed limiter connected. So you can, as you can see, it's on 22. I'm gonna change it up to 30. At 30 mile an hour if you was doing 30 mile an hour it would ping at you just to say that you've met the required speed that you'd set if you don't want that turn it back to middle and you'll see sld disconnected if you turn this up you get another little icon just here as well saying cruise control on doing 50 mile a down mile an hour down the road just go like that that's cruise now set uh, you can speed up slow down uh, cancel and resume and obviously you can cancel on your brake pedal this is for your radio. If you want the volume up on the radio, if you want to mute it, you can press mute. Onto this side, once your radio is paired, you can answer your calls, reject your calls, and go through your call register on here. Um, this vehicle has daytime running lights, so when you turn that on, you turn in dip beam on. Um, if you pull it towards you, you'll get high beam. If you pull it back again, you'll get just a dip beam, and obviously you can turn it off. You've got your indicators on this side you have your wipers i'm not going to do it but if you pull well i will do actually pull that there you've got your washer wipers on there you can set your intermittents your speed of your wipers all on this as well if you go to the end of your wiper one this controls your little panel there so if you press that it'll give you the range if you give if you trip distance if you get a second it will show you how long the trip is which it says in, on that one you want to reset it just hold it in a little bit longer and it says reset trip a and there you are it's all the way back you'll go through trip a all the way to trip b and again it'll say average consumption and all that sort of stuff you just press that a bit longer than you think and it resets trip b you go through all the way through trip b all the way back to today's date it's obviously got the temperature outside which is very nice and warm at the minute and you have your mileage and the time and date onto the side just down here you have fog lights that are just down on there these are your height adjustment for your uh, headlights this little mode button if you're not quite sure read in your fiat book and um, that allows you to go into your, your little panel on the front there and you can set your time your date and you use these two as the cursors to navigate round around the uh, menu moving on to here you have your mirrors the top two lines do the two big mirrors and then obviously you've got the bottom two they do the blind spot mirrors you have electric windows either side and obviously i showed you the side ones but on this one you pull that one across and it meets in the middle with the other one from over there um, and I believe for a whirlwind tour that was about it I know it's strange times still at the moment and you've had a video handover but if you do need to contact us at any point for anything don't hesitate to give us a bell and we'll get back to you and get it all sorted for you thank you